Time for this morning's checkup. CDC data shows there have been 13 cases of West Nile this year across the U.S. as of mid-June. Cases were reported in 10 states across the country. West Nile virus spreads during mosquito season. It begins in early summer and it can last through the fall. The CDC says there are no vaccines to prevent the virus, no medications to treat it. Most people infected don't even feel sick, but about one in five get mild symptoms. One in 150 develop more serious symptoms. Here to talk more about it is Dr. Monica Gandhi, Associate Division Chief of the Division of HIV Infectious Diseases and Global Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. So what's your message on West Nile virus? What's our best step to prevent it? So this is actually the main mosquito-borne illness in the United States. Mosquito-borne illnesses across the world are like malaria, for example. Luckily, we don't have a lot of that dengue. But essentially, this is the one that infects most Americans because it got into our mosquito chain brought over on a ship actually from New York City. Um, and so because of that, it's low level in our mosquito population. And the best way to control it is mosquito control. So not only spraying places with mosquito um, where they're gathering, but you as an individual using things like mosquito repellent, if you're going into a place with a lot of mosquitoes, wearing long sleeves. And essentially it is mostly benign for most people, but unfortunately it can rarely cause uh, paralysis. So it's all mosquito control, no vaccines, no treatments, unfortunately, right now. So paralysis would be the worst symptom. What are some of the other signs that somebody might be suffering from this? So mostly it's a mild fever. And then otherwise, unfortunately, if it gets bad, it's really what's called meningitis encephalitis. It's a part of a family of viruses that cause encephalitis, which is brain inflammation. And then there's an acute and flaccid paralysis, meaning you can't move. Again, that's extremely rare. And the main thing that we have to do is identify where it is and spray mosquitoes in those locations. All right, so have your DEET ready if you're going out for the, the camping trip or the family barbecue. Uh, a couple other health items we want to get your thoughts on uh, this morning. Men two times more likely to die from using drugs than women, according to new data published in the Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology. The drugs include opioids, cocaine, and meth, and the CDC reports fentanyl, largely to blame for the increase in drug overdose deaths, which killed nearly, killed nearly 107,000 people in 2021. Why are men more likely than women um, to die of overdoses? You know, um, it, this is very disturbing data in the sense that 107,000 people die of fentanyl overdoses a year in in the United States. That was the that was the rate last year. So it's really high. And then we've added to this problem with methamphetamine and cocaine, not just because they can be laced with fentanyl, but because they themselves can cause death. And men seem more likely than women in the sense that actually men, at least in this study, kind of self-medicate uh, in terms of despair and psychological pain, as opposed to seeking therapy, going and trying to seek help. They're sort of a, more likely to use drugs uh, to relieve some of that despair. And unfortunately, this is a time coming off a pandemic. It has been a really hard time in our country. Uh, there is also a link between incarceration and risky drug use, and men are more likely to be incarcerated, especially Black men, unfortunately. So it's those two features came out as the most um, common predictors of why men use more drugs than women. It means that we do have treatments. I mean, the, the best thing about fentanyl is we have treatments called methadone, called buprenorphine. We have ways to prevent overdoses, but it means that people, including men, have to do come into care and seek help. Right, it's access to those things to help fight it. Um, and most cities, and it's controversial. Right. Yeah, yes, and you're right about that. There are things like um, needle exchange and other sort of harm reduction ways that are applied unevenly around the country. Wow. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.